Hey everybody, good evening and welcome to this webcast. I'm Steve at Blackstar HQ in Northampton, England. And we've got a very, very special guest with us today. Hurricane Nita Strauss is ah, here with us. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's very cool to have you. It's very exciting. So you're, um, you're on tour with Alice Cooper currently? Yes. And also you're doing some shows with Motley as well as the Alice headlines and stuff? Yeah, we've got some, we were doing some headline shows in the UK with Alice and then we jump on with Motley Crue for a run of Europe shows and it's, I think it's going to be a blast. Cool. It's, you know, the whole tour with Motley Crue has been an amazing experience. We've yeah. been on this tour a year and a half or so now, and it's just been a, it's been an awesome time, awesome audiences, and uh, yeah, just really exciting. And you're like the, the last band to support Motley Crue. We are. You know, it's a, it's a crazy feeling. I was saying that last year when we were doing it. We're kind of the last band that we can say, you know, we ever that ever can ever say they toured with Motley Crue. And so it's such an awesome band. lineup. It the, works really well together. The lineup of the of the tour. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a cool support band uh, in Europe and the UK called Santa Sonia, which is an awesome band, cool. great fit for the lineup, and uh, they're just uh, one of my favorite upcoming bands. So I'm so excited they're on the tour. Awesome. And uh, and then Alice and Motley, of course, is kind of like a can't miss. You know, there's, you know, every single show is is an event. It's an extravaganza. And it's a lot yeah. of fun. Cool. So, I mean, going back to the beginning of when you when you got into music and, and started playing guitar, what were the, um, the, the the earliest influences of music when you were when you were a kid and stuff? And also, is your family musical? Yeah, I grew up in a classical music household. You know, okay. my uh, my dad is a musician. My dad's the one that got me my first guitar, and my dad kind of plays everything. He plays guitar, bass, and drums, and cool. all that. You know, jack of all trades, if you will. Um, but we always had opera and classical music on in the house growing up, so I was very influenced by that, uh, you know, from a young age. And uh, I think I carried that with me through my guitar playing. You know, I've always been drawn to neoclassical players like Jason Becker and Malmsteen. And, sure. You know, I, so I've always really, really liked that. And then, of course, the, the shred guys like Vi and Satriani and Paul Gilbert and Marty Freeman, you know, the more straightforward, if you can call it straightforward. <laughs> but uh, the, the less neoclassical, more uh, more just... You can straight. definitely hear that in your playing. Thank yeah, you. Totally, yeah. Thank you very much. And kind of the, the first music that really hit you, and, and after that, what made you want to play guitar? Um, you know, like I said, I was always really... I always had, you know, classical pieces that I liked as a child, and uh, but the real awakening for me playing guitar was the movie Crossroads. Cool. The movie, cool movie. Yeah. If you've not seen that movie. If you've not seen that movie, shame. <laughs> shame For <on> shame. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great movie, yeah. It will change. If you haven't seen that movie, it will change everything about your guitar playing and your approach to guitar playing. At least I think it will. It did for me. Yeah. It did for me. It's so, a pretty influential um, movie, yeah. Yeah, I was 13, and you know, it's funny, every guitar player in my guitar clinics and you know, people that I talk to and you know, the interviews or whatever go, Yes, I know. It's it's like this universal lead guitar player thing. That's, they saw that movie. They saw, won't ruin it for those of you who haven't seen the movie, but they saw the the scene. Yeah. And uh, and it changes everything. It changes, yeah. uh, you know, it just changes your perspective on what can be done with the instrument. And uh, it was very very influential for me. It's it's basically the Karate Kid goes to hell <laughs> and uh, learns to be a badass on the guitar, but he has to fight. He has to battle. Surgery. Yeah. yeah, he you know he goes on his journey throughout you know of being a guitar player and he's he's a classical player and wants to play the blues and and the whole thing. It's just see the movie, just yeah. just see the movie. Uh, <laughs> am, I, am I right in saying like Steve Vai played both parts? I've heard that. Like I've on heard, the telly as well. I've heard that. Um, I've also heard that uh, Ry Cooter played the blues parts. Oh, so right, okay. somebody watching right now is going, no, 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 it was so and so. <laughs> uh, so, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, I have heard that Steve. Played, cool. uh, played both the parts, played the Paganini part, and yeah. uh, and, and did uh, you try to learn it? No, I haven't. You know, I've, I've, I'm saving that that joy for when I have actual time. You know, yeah, we've, we've been on the road for so long. I tried to learn the Paganini piece years ago. I tried. You know, there was a a brief moment, maybe at age 16 or 17, where I thought I was a really good guitar player, and I thought oh, I'm gonna learn the Paganini Caprice from Crossroads. You know, I think it's Caprice number five, if I'm correct. Yeah. And uh, I sat down and tried to learn it for about 45 minutes and I was like, okay, I guess I'm not that good. <laughs> so maybe, you know, I think I think at my seal level, maybe now I could tackle it and, you know, hopefully we're, we're on this tour until the end of December and then maybe I can get home and actually learn some stuff for fun. Have a rest. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> rest. <laughs> so um, when we've been chatting and stuff, 
Um, you've said that you know, you've pretty much been on tour since you were like 15, 16. I started touring at 15, yeah. There's, there was breaks during that time, but yeah, I've been uh, consistently touring wow, and working. Wow, that's a really early start, isn't it? Yeah. It was, you know, it was a great education, kind of growing up on the road, growing up around other musicians, and you know, I was really lucky that I always had bands and crew that take that took really good care of me, that treated me like family. There was never, you know, any horror stories of people think, oh, a 15-year-old girl alone on the road with mm -hmm. no parent. You know, there was there was never anything even close to that. You know, I had a very great, safe, cool, and fun time. Yeah. You know, basically every tour I've ever done. Awesome. So, you know, it, it can happen. It's possible. <laughs> and it's a lot of hard work, too. You know, it's yeah. I would say it's harder work at that age because, I mean, no one takes me seriously now still, but <laughs> no one really took me seriously then. And, uh, you know, it's hard, you know, getting on stage as a, a young girl guitar player and having nobody ever think you're going to be any good. Yeah. Once again, not like anybody thinks I'm going to be any good now. No, I, but, it's, uh, the thing is, it, it is changing, isn't it? I mean, it's you, changing, yeah. You had like um, a poll where you were like number one in the top ten female guitar players to watch out for and stuff. Yes, yeah, I, and I was astounded by that. And the funny story behind that Guitar World article is, um, so I wouldn't make a Facebook account. I refused to make a Facebook account for the longest time. I wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. I just thought, this is pointless. I don't need to post pictures of my food and what I'm, you know, <laughs> all this stuff. You know, I, I don't want to be on, on Facebook. I don't want to be on Facebook. It's a waste. I have other things to do with my time, I thought. Um, and so finally, I ended up making a Facebook account in like 2011. And my second or third Facebook message ever was from Guitar World. Well, it was from wow. one of the, the editors of Guitar World saying, we're doing this article, we weren't sure how to get a hold of you, I'm so glad you're now on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it opens doors. Would you, yeah, would you want to be uh, in this article? And I said, yeah, of course, what an honor to be you know, in anything. If Guitar World wants to put my name on the bottom of the page in the corner, I'll be happy. And um, just, you know, and, and a, lot, a lot of times people bring up, it's 10 female guitar players you should know and ask me if I find that offensive or weird sure. in any way. I truly don't. You know, anybody that has a problem with being called a female guitar player that is a girl, I mean, it just, it is what it is. You need to look in the mirror and say, this is who I am. Yeah. You know, it's, it doesn't make sense to be offended by saying she's a female guitar player. Would it, you know, there are, there are plenty of lists of, you know, of, of guitar players that don't have females on them. There's lists of, female, of guitar players that do. Yeah. But, it's yeah. just nice to be included. Yeah, it's just nice to get invited to the party. And you, and you got some, you got some number, you were number one. <laughs> Which was astounding to me. I didn't <laughs> think that was going to happen at all. I thought, you know, I was going to click on the article and I'd find my my number down at the bottom, number 10 or you 9. You were looking for your name? So. Yeah. And well, I opened it right up and there was my name at the top of the page and I was like, is this real life? Like, is this, could this really be happening? And um, it was just such a great feeling to, you know, to for the first time really get recognized by the magazine that I spent most of my you know, my formative years and still now, you know, reading and learning from, you know, when I, when I was growing up playing guitar, I didn't have a guitar teacher or anything. I would just buy Guitar World. So it was, yeah, it was, you were self-taught, weren't totally you? Totally self-taught. And I would just get Guitar Worlds and read the tabs, yeah. you know, and I would look at the ads and see, like, look at what amps were cool and what people were playing and, you know, what, what venues people were playing. I remember, like, looking at tour dates, like, wow, this is so cool. And now <laughs> I get to go to most of these places and it's yeah. been a trip. Cool, man. And you learnt off DVDs and CDs and DVDs stuff. DVDs and, and CDs and uh, John Petrucci, Rock Discipline, Marty Freeman, Melodic Control, uh, Ingvay Malmsteen, Play Loud was a big one. Um, you know, it's it's weird being a self-taught guitar player because you really just focus on what you want to learn. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm totally self-taught really? as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird, right? Because <laughs> yeah. you, I at least for me, I see all these other guitar players and they know theory that I don't know or they know Same. exercise that I don't know. At my clinic. Uh, the other day, someone said, "Do you do spider exercises?" And I said, "What's a what is a spider exercise?" And everybody in the room knew except me. It's it's this, this kind right, of thing, yeah, which I, of course I do. I just don't know. I didn't know either. Ha! Ah, <laughs> Self-taught guitar players. Yeah, that's how we do totally. it. <laughs> and guess what? And now we're sitting up here to talking yeah. to other people about playing guitar. And so I it can be it's, done. It's a real kind of. That's a message to to kind of say to you that if you believe in what you're doing, absolutely, you're going to get somewhere. You know? If you believe in what you're doing and you are willing to put in the work then you then there's I truly believe there's no way to fail so along the way Nate you've had like um, quite a few highlights musically um, you know I think do you do stuff like uh, for video games as well I Critical do. Hit? And I do yeah well Critical Hit is a, a basically a tribute band to video game music cool. which is put together by uh, some of the lead composers for Blizzard Entertainment 
Jason Hayes, who's the lead composer on World of Warcraft, and yeah. these guys. So it's a, it's a great project, and um, you know, I got to play with a lot of really phenomenal musicians playing that band, and it's crazy too when you think about you know I'm the only one that doesn't read music in that band, and the arrangements are so complex. I don't really play with them that often, and that's a big reason why. Because sure. first of all, I'm never home. You know, yeah. I'm never able to do these one-off shows. I'm always on the road, but. Um, the arrangements are so complex, and everyone else has got basically a book there in sure. front of them to read, and I've got to keep it all in here. Yeah. So that's one of the downfalls of being self-taught. I do wish I would have dedicated myself yeah. a little better to reading too, music. Yeah. I tell people I can, so I can. I saw I saw one of the videos and it was a really cool tune. It was very kind of classical. There was some horn sections, but then it came to the guitar stuff and it was distorted and it was yeah. it was kind of getting a little bit more. Yeah, Proggy. it is. It's a, it's like a prog video game band. You know, there's a violin, a cello. The cello is played by Tina Guo, who I absolutely love. Um, and then a violin, a cello, a flute, a classical piano, and then a keyboardist, a drummer, a bass player, and uh, Pedro Eustache on World Winds, which is like the craziest instruments I've ever seen. It's amazing watching him play these things. You know, these making these contortions with his cheeks, like making these certain ways of blowing the air into the instrument. And it's just like, it's such a privilege to get to watch people at their craft like that, which, yeah. you know, in a situation where I normally never would have gotten to see it. Uh, and then playing on the soundtrack to video games was a totally, completely opposite experience because that's just me in the studio. And it's perfect for me because I kind of play guitar like a racing video game anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it's, yeah, it's easy to just get in there and, and they say, okay, this is just a high energy battle scene. And for the most part, it's just, wow, 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 woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and that's yeah. the stuff I'm best and at, shredding, you know? Yeah, cool. yeah if, you, if you want some over the top crazy squeals and dive bombs and sweeps and stuff, I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the next time I kind of saw what you were doing was the, the Iron Maidens. That's right. Cool. That's right, so the how did Iron that come Maidens. About? Um, well, the Iron Maidens has been, have been around since 2001. They've been around since, basically since I started playing guitar, actually. Wow, so I guess cool. I started playing around 2000. Yeah. So, uh, so they, uh, they've been around since 2001, and they were sort of in L.A. where I'm from. They're, like, known all around as sort of, like, this breeding ground of female musicians, guitar players in particular. Yeah. So a lot of the proficient female guitar players in LA have passed through this band at one point or another. Right, okay. And uh, so it was just kind of my turn, I guess. You know, I, I got into the band with uh, Courtney Cox playing Adrian Smith and yeah. me playing Dave Murray. And uh, it's just been, you know, the, the Iron Maidens was such a, a great education, you know, because I never was really that kind of blues player like Dave. Yeah. And learning those licks really took me out of my sort of legato, sweepy, Malmsteeny comfort zone sure. and into the more nitty gritty rock side of things. Yeah. So it was a, a great experience. I do wish, <clears throat> excuse me, I do wish in hindsight I would have gone back and learned the Dave Murray parts a little more note for note. Because I was, you know, I just, as a guitar player, you just, you always want to put your own spin on yeah, things. Yeah, and, and it comes wanna, through naturally, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. And also you want to do the licks you're comfortable with, yeah. you know. So I'd be like, okay, he's in C, I'm going to kind of do this. And um, and I do wish I would have gone back and really learned it properly, because I think that's a great way to educate yourself and get new licks under your fingers and then translate those licks into your playing. Yeah. Did those guys, did the Iron Maiden guys ever come to see you play, or did you meet them? Or? Uh, I've met them a couple times. I've met oh. uh, a couple of them a few times. They never came to the shows while I was in the band, but they did before I was in the band, right, I believe. Right, okay. um, but they're really supportive. They're really cool. Every time I've spoken to the guys in Iron Maiden, they've been just unbelievably cool about it. and supportive and and you know asking questions asking how the shows were going and cool. it's really, really super really nice cool. guys yeah oh yeah bit of a, a british legend yeah oh yeah <laughs> well you know when i when i do my clinics here in the uk i always you know usually i start with an alice cooper song but anytime i'm over here i always will start with an iron maiden song because yeah. we're in iron maiden territory we love maiden <laughs> we all do <laughs> we, it, would it be cool if i played a song with you let's do it let's do a maiden song awesome cool let's get set up Yeah. 
that was cool, playing along to Iron Maiden. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You know, it's a treat for me because I never get to play these songs anymore. That's so, cool. Uh, That's it's cool. definitely a treat for me. So, should we talk a little bit about the gear? Let's talk about um, the gear. Obviously, um, we're very, very happy to have you on board with Black Star. I'm very happy um, to be here. <laughs> we're looking. We'll look at that in a minute. But your guitars, yes. your it's it's an Ibanez S series. Yes, right? this is an Ibanez S series. Uh, we have Demarzio Gravity Storm pickups in the neck and bridge, and a True Velvet in the middle. Um, I gravitate toward Ibanez guitars naturally for a couple reasons. Uh, first is the balance. As you can see, it's very very evenly it's balanced. Really slim. Yeah. It's it's not only that it's thin, but it's you know you can see. I don't know if the camera can pick up. You don't need to hold it by the neck joint. It's not going to tip one way or the other. Sure. You know, so I love that about it. You know, I throw my guitar around a lot on stage. Oh, but you got all fingerprints on you. <laughs> um, you know, I throw my guitar around a lot on stage, and it's nice to yeah. have something very evenly balanced like that. I like the thin thinness of the neck. Is uh, makes it just really easy to play. Play fast you know, as well. Play fast. You know, everybody everybody that picks up this guitar and plays fast. And my boyfriend's a drummer, and and even he picks up this guitar and shreds on it. You know, like, it's, uh, it's just easy. Yeah, it's just, you know, this guitar just makes you play fast. It's, cool. a, it's a shred machine. And then, of course, the bridge, the Ibanez, should I do the stress test on the bridge? Oh cool, yeah. <laughs> you this, know. Is, this is a very cool uh, cool thing. So you get the, the cool thing about these Ibanez bridges. It stays perfectly in tune. Still in pitch, yeah. It stays perfectly in tune. So I love that because I'd give this whammy bar a lot of abuse to give it a good, yeah. you know, and all I gotta do is tighten it up, give it a good crank here with a thumb screw. And Very it's in cool. tune all the way up to the high register, which yeah. is nice. Stays so, in pitch uh, really well, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I love about this guitar. That's what I love about Ibanez guitars in general. Cool. Uh, this is a ZR bridge. You know, people go, oh, it's a Floyd Rose. Any Floyd Rose can do the same thing. A Floyd Rose cannot do that. I'd like to see a Floyd Rose do that. <laughs> so uh, these ones, you have that real even balance yeah, in the it's bridge. Well balanced. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. The, the ball bearing in the bridge and the ZR bridge is able to do that. Cool. So I like that about this guitar. Cool. And and the amplifiers and, and the sound, what what turned you on to Blackstar? Mm. Well, <laughs> um, you know, I uh, I started with Blackstar at the same time I started with the Alice Cooper band, actually. Cool. Uh, and I called up uh, one of the Blackstar A&R reps and I said, I need something really versatile. And uh, they pointed me to the Series 1, the L34, which is a great rock amp. You know, it's a great, it's great, it's got this nice clean channel that we just heard a little bit, you know. And one, one thing I love about it is a lot of these really high gain amps don't have a clean clean. Yeah, it's a really difficult balance, A real isn't dirty it? clean, you know, and uh, I had an amp before that I loved with a great overdrive channel, but the clean was unusable because it's just so, you know, you can get that gritty clean, you know, you yeah, can you dial can it in it on here, yeah. but you get that really nice... <laughs> Yeah, you get that nice, soft, sustainy. Yeah, clean. and it will give you that kind of classic crunch as yeah, well. Yeah. And uh, and then you, of course, the two overdrive channels. And uh, and then all I've got here is the Black Star boost pedal and cool. a, and a digital delay in the loop. Giving you a little bit more sustain. And exactly. Cool. Yeah. And really, the boost pedal is only on during the solos. Everything you guys are hearing today is just coming from this Black Star Series One. Cool. And, it, and how does it work in in the the sonic scape of having three guitar players? So I know Tommy Tommy Hendrickson uses Black Star as well. Yes. He? Tommy's using an HT metal. Cool. And uh, you know, the, the sound transition was very seamless cool. for the band. You know, we're all, myself, Tommy Henriksen, and Ryan Roxy are all very different guitar players from each other. And you all have your own space. We all have our own space and we all sort of do our own thing. And it's, it's great that our styles, while being so disparate, meshed so well from the very beginning. There was never a, oh, Mita, you're playing too much like this, you know, play more like this. It was very seamless from, from the first rehearsal. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And it sounds great when you when, when you see uh, Nita play with Alice on stage. It sounds awesome, man. It's the amp. It rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so so recently, Nita, I saw a, a video online on your website um, that showed uh, the day that you went to Jason Becker's house, who's yes. one of your heroes. Yes, absolutely. And um, yeah, tell us how that came about. 
Well, it's a really funny story, and it's funny that the story got sort of picked up by different, uh, you know, music news outlets and sort of twisted. So the real story is um, my boyfriend, Josh, uh, told me one day that I had a big audition coming up. He said, I, you know, I have a big audition for you. I have to play something really difficult, something really challenging. I was like, oh, I'll play some Malmsteen. That, you know, I'll, I'll relearn the Rising Force solo or something, and it'll be fine, you know. He goes, no, 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 you really have to play something over the top, something really, you know, that will really impress these people. And pushing the limit. Pushing the limit, you know. He told me that the, the person who the audition was for had asked, well, what is her ceiling? Like, what's the best she can play? And he said, she has no ceiling. She can play anything. So then I had to make him look good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so he, uh, he taught me to learning Perpetual Burn by Jason Becker, yeah. which initially, I, you know, I only had maybe five days to learn, you know, whatever I was going to learn. Mm. I thought it was too big of an undertaking in such a short amount of time. But then once the stubbornness kicked in, we said, well, they're looking at other guitar players for this. Don't you want to be better? I was like, well, okay. You know, <laughs> stubbornness kicked in. And, um, you know, I got through a good portion of Perpetual Burn. And uh, we drove all the way up to San Francisco thinking that I had an audition to be uh, the face of a guitar app company, like sure. a new app, iPhone app for guitar players. Uh, and it wasn't until we pulled up at Jason's house that... I started to put two and two together and, and it started to sink in. Started to sink in. And you can actually see the moment on the video where it sinks in. I was like, What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> why are we why are we at someone's house? <laughs> you know. And um and that was when and there's like, you know, a whole there was a whole convoluted, you know, story behind it, all the trickery that was involved in getting me there. But um It's cool. It's a cool video. If you check it out if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it's on my website, neostrauss.com and uh and man, playing for Jason was just such a such a great honor. Yeah. You know, because Jason as a guitar player has given whether or not a lot of guitar players know who he is, he's given the, the world of guitar playing such a great gift. Absolutely. You know. And uh his, his he, story, he, he was an amazing player. The best of the best. Um, There's never been anyone if you, better. If you don't know Jason's story, there's a really good movie to watch yeah, as well. Jason Becker's not dead yet. Uh it's on iTunes. I always tell everybody is I recommend buying it and not renting it because you'll watch it a lot of times. You'll save yourself money renting it a bunch of times. Just buy it. I think it's nine ninety nine yeah. on iTunes. And he was he was struck down with Lou Gehrig's disease and um, not given really that long to live. And he was an, an amazing guitar player of huge potential. Truly, none none better. Yeah. I honestly believe and, there um, hasn't he's, been. And he's still defying all the odds. Still composes today. Yeah, um, years by, later. by sight, doesn't he? Yes, he's uh, he and his family have worked out a, a system where they can uh, he can communicate by by looking at different letters where different letters would be on a board. It's it's really an inspirational story, and like you said, defies all odds when he's given only a few years to live. And, yeah, you know, and I truly I see that love for guitar. You know, I see the love for the instrument and the passion. You know. It would be so easy for anybody else to just say, oh, I can't play anymore, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm done, and, and be bitter about it. And, uh, and Jason is, is so funny and so cool and so fun to be around, you know, and we're sitting there in his house and he was like, you know, offering us a beer and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, hey, do you guys want a beer or anything? It's or cool. He said, you know, do you need to use the bathroom? I know you had a long drive. <laughs> like, <laughs> how cool is that? You yeah. know, like it would be so his, uh, his story and his, his, uh, his spirit. For life is really really inspiring. That's awesome, and I noticed you were using the ID Core in the video as I well. I was, yeah. Which is great. <laughs> if, you don't know, if you're not familiar with the ID Core, it's our small practice amp range of amps, um, and they start really really inexpensive. And it sounded sounds great on the video. You're yeah. playing Perpetual Burn, and that's actually what I use in the dressing room with Alice Cooper too. Cool, I use cool. the same thing, and you know it's nice having the ID Core there because you have all your sounds. Yeah. It's not like these practice amps where every time you turn it on you have to dial it in. You have to you know, set it up, and if you want a different tone, you have to, like, switch back to it and go, how much gain did I have, how much is in that? With the ID Core, I had all my settings all prepared, and cool. it was really, like, it's no worries. It's a great, great little product. Yes. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for, for being here, Nita. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you, guys. Thank you for hanging out with us. And, thank you for having me. Um, hopefully you'll let me play one more song with you, if that's, Let's do it. If that's cool. I'd like to play the first Alice Cooper song I ever heard. Cool. Which um, I usually end my clinics by playing this song too, and this is a this is a song that I used to play with like a bar band in LA, you know, play on Saturday nights, just like a little cover band playing '80s covers, and I never dreamed that one day I'd be standing on stage with Alice Cooper yeah. playing this song. So I thought it'd be fun for us to jam it to close cool. up the night. Maybe dreams do some come true. Yeah. Yes, and if you song? work hard enough and you want it bad enough. <laughs> and the song is. The song is. What do you guys think it is? It's Poison, of course. Cool. <laughs> At least I know that one. I yeah. do know that one, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool.
cool. Let's jam it. And thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Thanks cool. for having me. Like I